Hey, welcome back. What I want to talk about in this video is how your Android application should handle when the screen is being rotated. So many applications get this wrong. And in a lot of apps, you'll actually find weird UI bugs or even crashes when you rotate the phone. When a user rotates their phone, what I'd expect as a user is that the UI should remain the same. However, a screen rotation is considered a configuration change. And by default, the Android system will destroy the activity for configuration changes, wiping away any of the UI state that you had stored in your activity. The solution is something called view models. So here's the Android developer guide for a view model. The view model class is designed to store and manage UI related data in a life cycle conscious way. What that means looking at this diagram is that the view model scope is larger than the activity scope. And so when you rotate your phone, the activity will go through the full cycle of getting destroyed and then recreated. So the benefit of the view model is that because it has a larger scope, all the UI data we can pull out of the activity, put it into our view model, and then it won't be destroyed in the same way the activity is destroyed. So another way to look at this is this diagram here. The view model is responsible for holding the UI data. And that means the only thing the activity is responsible for is drawing the UI and receiving the user interactions. You could imagine how we might have a more complicated data source. So we can actually have another component called the repository, which is dealing with actually saving and loading app data. What I'd like to do is walk through a concrete example of how we could use the view model in a real app. So what we have here is a basic app which implements the recycler view in 42 lines of code. And I'll link the set of videos where we walked through how to do that. But basically, you have different people or different contacts, a list of them, and we're rendering them in a recycler view. Let's open up LogCat, and I've already started the app. And so you can see that we have onCreate and create contacts both logged. If I rotate the phone, now you can see that we actually are calling the onCreate method again, followed by create contacts. The onCreate is, is expected because every time we rotate the phone, the activity is going to be recreated. However, our goal in this video is that using the view model, this UI data, which is, the, which is happening in create contacts, that should only happen once. So when we rotate the phone, we should no longer see a log statement for our create contacts. First thing I'll do is just do some quick surgery on this class. So pulling out the adapter, and then also I want to make a separate variable for the list of contacts. Okay, let's go back to the developer site to take a look at how to create and use the view model. So if you scroll up a little bit, you can see some sample code. The main activity is going to create a new view model. We're passing in this, which is the activity into view model providers, letting the view model be aware of the life cycle of the activity. And then we pass in a reference to our view model. And here's the other key part is that we are going to be observing changes on the UI data. So the activity itself will never make changes. Instead, it'll send events into the view model. Going back to the code, the first thing we'll do is start typing view model providers dot of this, which will be the activity reference. And we need a library from Jetpack in order to actually import view model providers. So Android Studio can help us with that. And all that's doing is in the build.gradle file in the app module, we're adding in that line. Now we can go ahead and import. Now the next step is we want to pass in a reference to our new view model class. So to do that, let's open up a new Kotlin file. I'm going to call it main activity view model. And the reason I'm calling it main activity view model is because this is going to hold all the UI data for the main activity. And this is going to inherit from view model. This class is going to have one property or member variable. And we'll call it contacts live data. And the reason it's contacts live data is because this data might change. The view model is going to do some operations on that and the activity will be listening for changes on this live data. Uh, the reason Android Studio is complaining is because this property isn't initialized. Well, I'm going to add an init method and we'll initialize it here. The context live data will be mutable live data. One more thing we'll do is just let's include a tag so we know when this view model is being initialized. So now that we've defined the view model, we can go back into main activity and let's actually reference it. Great, this is now going to give us back a model. And let's remember, the view model is designed to hold all of the UI data. The only UI data we have right now is the list of contacts. And so our goal is we want to move this out and put it into our main activity view model. 
So first, I'm going to initialize contacts instead of it being created in main activity, we want to just make this an empty list. And all the UI data will be held in the view model. We can paste in the create contacts method at the bottom. And what we want is we want the initial value of the live data to be the list of contacts that we're creating here. So we can do that in the init method. And then this needs to be a mutable list because that's the type of the contacts live data. Next, we'd like to be able to provide a getter method. Now that we've defined this get contacts, we can actually start to use it in main activity. Now, the way this works is we are going to simply observe changes in the data coming from our view model. So we'll say get contacts, and this returns live data, which we'll be observing. We'll pass in this, which is the activity, and we're now going to pass in a, an observer. And the observer is going to pass to the main activity a snapshot of the contacts, so the current state of the contacts that the view model has been held, holding on to. So I'm going to call this contacts snapshot. And our goal here now is to update the UI based on this information. So first thing I'm going to do is add a log statement so it's easy for us to see what's happening. So we received contacts from view model if we got inside of here. And now we want to update the recycler view data. So first thing we'll do is clear the contacts that we already have um, that are backing the recycler view. Then we want to add in the new contacts that we just received from the snapshot. And then finally, we want to notify the adapter that the data has changed. So now if we open up Logcat, and let's run this one more time, we ran the app and the main activity started and this creates the view model, which creates the contacts. And then we're immediately observing the data and received contacts from the view model. If I rotate the screen, we know that the activity is going to be destroyed and recreated. So we expect to see this log statement one more time, but the view model should not be created again. So those logs should not appear upon rotation. You can see indeed that we got the onCreate for the main activity, but none of the view model logs are there. Basically, the UI data is safe in the view model, and that's not being destroyed with the activity. So in this way, we're able to fix a whole class of issues that come up when you're dealing with phone rotation. This gives a pretty good demonstration of the power of the view model, but it's not super interesting because we're only constructing this list of 150 contacts as static data at the beginning when the app is booted up, but there's no actual changes to the data. And so what I want to do is have one more addition onto this example. I'm going to add in a, a view, which allows us to swipe down on the recycler view. It's a pull to refresh action. So when that happens, we want to fetch new data is there's actually a component on Android called the swipe refresh layout. Google for Android code path swipe refresh, then code path has a guide which explains how, how this works. So here's what we're going to implement. If you pull down to refresh, you're going to see this spinner. Um, which tells you that there's new data coming in. And usually this is used by apps to re-render or refresh the feed or a page. So to use the Swipe Refresh layout, you need to include this dependency. So I'm going to open up the build.gradle file, which is located in the app module, paste it in, tap on sync now, which will actually download the library. The next step is we need to wrap the recycler view with the Swipe Refresh layout. I'm going to copy this. And all we need to do is open up the activity main XML and then enclose our recycler view with the swipe refresh layout. And then this ID we're going to need in the main activity to start referencing the swipe refresh layout. So let's go back and just see how this might be used. In the activity, we get a reference to the swipe container and then we set a on refresh listener. This listener will get triggered when we detect that the user has done the swipe down to refresh action. So in main activity, I'm going to add that down here, set on refresh listener. And this is a callback, which is going to be invoked when the user has done the action. And so here, show the refreshing UI and fetch new data. For our purposes, let's actually create a dummy contact and just put that at the very top of the list. And so to do that, all of the data manipulation should happen in the view model. And so I'm going to define a method in the view model called fetch new contact. 
this doesn't exist yet, but Android Studio will help us to create this. So first thing we'll do, let's just add a log statement so we know when this method is being called. So there's two things that are going to happen in this fetch new contact method. One is add the new contact. And the second thing that'll happen is we want to indicate that we're actually in this special mode of refreshing. Typically when you do swipe to refresh, the app should probably make an API call over the internet or make a database call to retrieve data. But in either case, both of those operations might take some time and we need to be notified when the operation is finished and then we need to hide this refreshing layout. So I can show you what that looks like. Let's just run the app and we can see now that we've added the swipe refresh layout, if I swipe down, you can see that we have this spinner. So the knowledge of whether we're in a refreshing state or not, that will actually educate the UI that we have. Because this is UI data, we need to store this in the view model. So I'm going to have one more property called is refreshing live data. And this is going to be immutable live data of type Boolean. And we'll do something similar in the init. Initially, because we're loading the data directly in from create contacts, the is refreshing live data, the value will be false. However, as soon as we start fetching a new contact, the value will become true. We're still going to be in this refreshing state until we indicate that we're done creating the new contact. Because we're going to actually be faking it, we're going to just arbitrarily wait for one second. The way we'll do that is with something called a handler. The handler, and then make sure you're importing the handler, which is coming from the Android operating system, post delayed, and we're going to create a runnable. What we're doing here is we don't want long running operations to happen on the main thread. And so if we wanted to actually emulate an API call or a database call, we'll use the runnable. The second parameter is the delay in milliseconds. And so I'm going to give it a one, thousand millisecond delay, which means wait for one second. And the action we're going to take after one second is the contents of this runnable. So what we'll do here is first we'll get the current value of contacts. And then on this value of contacts, we're going to add one more contact, this fake data that we have. So our fake contact, it takes in a, age, a name and age. The name is Julius Campbell, and I'm just putting in an arbitrary age of 52. And then this is complaining because contacts may be null. And so we, just, we want to make this operation conditional, just so we avoid NPE and Kotlin is happy. Once we've added this to the contacts, we now want to assign this value back into the value of the live data. And finally, once this is done, we no longer need to be in the refreshing state. So I'll say the is refreshing live data value is now false. So the last step in the view model is we want to similar look to how we have a getter for the context live data. We want something similar for the is refreshing live data. And this is simply going to be a returning the is refreshing live data. So we're, we'll now do something quite similar to what we did with the contacts live data and observe changes on the state of is refreshing or not. So we'll say model dot get is refreshing and then observe changes. And so this now takes in a Boolean, which is whether we're refreshing or not. The view model is telling us, are we in a refreshing state or not? And we use that to update the UI. So that's simply updating the swipe container view and telling it whether we're refreshing or not. Okay, so let's try that out. In the emulator, let's actually do a pull down to refresh. After a one second delay, we're able to insert one more contact at index zero at the very top of the recycler view. Let's take a look at what's happening behind the scenes. There are four relevant logcat lines. First is fetch new contact, which is the request from main activity asking the view model to get a new contact. Next, you can see that both of the observers are triggered in main activity. That means that the view model is informing the main activity that there are updates on both the relevant pieces of UI data for get contacts and is refreshing. Finally, after one second, the view model updates the value of is refreshing to false, which the main activity observes and then updates the UI. Now we can start to see the real benefit of using the view model, which is that there's a very clear separation between any of the operations which update the data and the view or the activity, which is simply observing or reacting to changes on that data. 
That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.